All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well today. Thanks a lot for tuning in. As always, I really appreciate it. Shout out to all the subscribers. Big up to anybody new. We've got some great news. Finally, this fight has been um, signed. Liam Paro is going to take on Subriel Matias in Puerto Rico in June. This fight was spoken about a, a few weeks ago. Then um, Rodriguez came into the mix. I made videos about all these except for the Paro one originally. And then um, Rivera threw his name in the hat. And, you know, now finally Liam Paro, which I think personally is probably the best fight stylistically out of the three. I say probably because I don't think Rivera would have been much of a challenge, to be honest with you. Um, I think he would have been very negative and tried to outbox for a bit, as long as it lasted. But I think the Rodriguez fight for me was an interesting one because Rodriguez can punch a little bit and he's wiry and rangy. But, you know, ultimately, I think the Paro matchup for me is just slightly better because I think Paro is extremely well prepared i think he's mentally really tough very game he's undefeated right now he doesn't know how to lose and he's willing to go in the back garden he's done it before well actually he um he was supposed to be the um he was supposed to fight regis progray before uh daniel zaria stepped in so he was willing to do that i think that would have been a really good fight actually um, and look, he just I can just see when you watch an interview with him, he just seems really at ease, as does Matthias. You know, Matthias is, is a bit different because he's literally almost been through hell and back. I've done multiple videos on it. And, you know, that's one of the things that endears me to him is, is just his spiritual energy, to be honest. But Paro, very similar in the sense that he doesn't leave any stone unturned it seems in training camp and I, I say that obviously I don't know I'm not in his training camp but I, I just see his energy I see the way he fights I see his physique it's just getting more sturdy he's very stocky he's got a good low center of gravity he's a southpaw he's got a pretty good jab he can buck quite nicely he can bang a little bit too he's coming off two really good wins uh you know Defeated Montana Love very decisively, knocked him out, and then he knocked out his countryman Brock Jarvis in one round with a beautiful left hand. And he had a fight against um, Alamo, I forgot his first name, but I can't find that fight um, online. But I, on Box Rec, it says Paro got dropped in the first round. I don't know if he was hurt badly or, or how that, you know, or what punch did that. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. But, you know, um, in terms of the Matias fight, look. It's no secret you're <laughs> you're going into you know the lion's den basically when you're fighting Matias you're fighting you you got to take yourself to a dark place not just in training camp but in the fight too and I think Paro does take himself to a dark place in most training camps because he just seems like I said very well prepared mentally physically spiritually um, but you know the the fight itself. It's going to get deep and it's going to get dark. And sometimes, you know, you I, I feel like I've been saying it for a while. You really need a pure boxer to be able to, you know, slow the fight down, clinch properly, um, use a good jab if you can. I know Matias uh, Paro's a southpaw, so, you know, the jab situation will be a bit, little bit different, but clinches too. Matias is very good at clinching and he's, I'm also working on a video on his on his punch technique, right? The science behind it. It really is. I'm trying to get my head around it. It's so good. It's it's very unorthodox, but how he gets so much leverage and he whips these shots in whilst going backwards, whilst trying to grapple with his opponents. You know, I've I've spoken about this before. It's. I don't know. I don't really understand it. It's amazing because I really focus on punch technique a lot. And he just whips these shots in there like that. And he's, like I said, he's going backwards. He's grappling with an opponent. He's knocked opponents down whilst going backwards. He's knocked opponents down whilst hitting them on the head like that. And I've said before, scientifically, when you're, when you're landing a shot and the power travels through your bone arms like that, maximum power, he ends up catching guys like that. And he still drops them, still hurts them. And Dukem Baev actually hurt him in the fourth round with a mean overhand left. Jukembaev though unloading, there's a straight left, a couple of big straight lefts. Oh, and now Matias might be hurt. Matias is getting hit. 
and you know it buzzed Matthias and he just came right back five seconds later maybe six or seven seconds later so what like whatever you do to deter him he's just coming right back right back through you and it's just you know that that's you can't teach that <laughs> you can't teach that kind of heart which is why I think we're going to get a great fight because I think Liam Parrow's got you know something similar I don't know if it's as uh, battle tested or as deep as Matthias is more when we're going to find out um, one thing I think you know obviously a lot of opponents that do fight Matthias end up quitting or you know the corner I think it's five in a row now but I'm going to compare Paro to Duke Mbaev a little bit because Duke Mbaev out of all the other fighters is the only one that's pushed on and has actually managed to get past that defeat I think properly at least I'm sure I haven't looked at all the others deeply but I know Duke Mbaev is doing well because it's what how you deal with the, the loss mentally after you know taking such a beating basically but he's on a three or four in a row win streak and I, I think personally if I'm going to if I'm going to say from an early thoughts point of view who wins this I would say it's a rough fight for Paro it really is and I think down the stretch, I think Matias would be a bit much for him. But I think he'll put up a decent fight. I just think he has enough boxing tools to see it out. And he's going to get dragged into a fight which favours Matias. So I think a late stoppage for me, maybe a corner stoppage again. And um, But, you know, there'll be no shame in that, really, to be honest with you. I think it depends on it's how you act after, you know, I think. But, you know, he, he might box out of his skin. He might... He might surprise me um i hope he does i hope we get a good fight and i hope both these fighters come out the ring healthy that's all that's all we can ask for that's all i ever ask for and you know what i mean it's one hell of a battle like i said you got to take yourself but he's he was a former rugby player paro so he's picked two of the toughest sports in the world rugby and boxing so he's going to be ready for war and you know they're going to have to put a good game plan together they're going to have to understand how to deal with those sharp quick whipping punches that matthias throws from unorthodox positions and the cadence is unorthodox and like he'll just do this before his before his punch is actually finished or even really properly landed he's already throwing the second one it's a little unusual and it might that might be one of the reasons it throws fighters off he's going backwards it's very hard to do that i don't quite know how he does it <laughs> i'm looking into it in a bit more detail as i said and i'll put that video up in the next few days you know, so I'll try and break down scientifically what's going on because when he when he lit up Jukenbaev right, and he was stationary like that, and he just whips his hand around like that, you see the muscles just t light up in his left arm, just from out of nowhere, and that he's just going up as well because his arms down here, so it's going against gravity, whipping it round and and dropping Jukenbaev in in um, spectacular fashion, really, but. You know, it's just all the other things that come with, with the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, and him being able to take a punch and him not being deterred at all and just keep walking through whatever firepower you've got. I mean, it could get ugly, do you know what I mean, later on in the fight. That's why. But Paro's got, he's got a decent little jab. He's got a good little step back game. I don't know what his clinch game is, to be honest with you, because... Um, he wasn't no there wasn't montana love wasn't really it wasn't really about that and i i i only see the highlights to be honest with you but i would love to see i'll go back and watch some footage maybe there's a fight where there's a more of an inside game where paro's mixing it up in there because you're going to need some skills on the inside to shut those punches down just to get your gravity get your feet under you get your base under you tuck your chin away turn a little bit get your shots in as well but um, it is, there's a lot to deal with. That's a lot to deal with, and it's it's a tough fight. But it's a great fight, and that's why I'm making this video because I think we are in for a bit of a treat on June. I don't think they've got a date yet. It's in it's in Puerto Rico, but I think it's a fantastic fight. I really do. And Liam Paro with Matchroom, uh, Subriel Matias now just signed with Eddie Hearn, brings him to a homecoming. This is why I I made a video about him signing with Hearn. I was like, this is a great signing because he's. He does the things he, he tells the fighters he's going to do, you know, and you get the stories from the fighters. Regis Progre said this. He's like, Eddie Hearn did exactly what he told me he was going to do. He said he was going to get me a homecoming, and he said he was going to get me a big fight, and that's exactly what happened. And I, 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 I'm happy because the fighters get paid, and when they get paid and they get taken care of, that's all that matters to me. I don't care about the promoters, but I do in the sense where, you know, Eddie Hearn does seem to be some of the better ones at least from paying fighters and you know somewhat i don't want to use the word honoring because that's probably not the right word but sticking on his word for now 
but you know he hasn't been perfect by no means but if these fighters get paid and they get they get the opportunities and they get taken care of then that's all i care about really but let me know your thoughts on the fight you know like would you have rather seen rodriguez or would you have rather seen rivera or do you like the power of fight because personally stylistically i think it's actually a really good matchup i think it really like i said when you come when you come fully prepared mentally physically and you're on a roll as well. Paro really believes in himself big time. Do you know? And I can tell when you watch his interviews. I know there was that back and forth sparring session he had with Shakur Stevenson. And look, you know, there people post footage. I haven't seen the footage that he posted. That apparently Shakur Stevenson posted some footage of him getting the better of Paro. But uh, sparring, sparring at the end of the day. At least he's out there mixing it up with these guys. And that would be great experience. But he's willing to go to people's backyards. I've got the most amount of respect for that. So... But I wish them both well. And as I said, let me know your thoughts on this fight. Tremendous fight for boxing, I think. And, you know, may the best man win. That's all we can ask for. I'm out of here. Peace and love. When you're fighting Sobriel Matias, Arta Betabiev, David Benavidez, you are in their spider's web. That's your starting point. And there's no way out. Arthur better be it. They are coming to seek and destroy you. Destroy.